Hello guys, welcome to this video. If you're new, my name is Moyo and you're so welcome to Shivite. Um, I make videos all about food, faith and lifestyle. I have so many videos for you to check out about Nigerian food, about Africa, about incontinent. So check them out if you haven't. Um, subscribe if you haven't also and share this video with your friends and family who you think would enjoy it. Um, a few weeks ago, I put up a video about the year of return 2019. Return 2019 is basically a call by the Ghanaian government, by the country of Ghana, to all the Africans taken away by slave trade into the diaspora to try and rediscover, rediscover, rediscover actually is the best word, to rediscover their roots. I'm really trying to speak slowly, guys, help me. <laughs> um, and so I basically talked about um, the difference or the seeming beef that occurs between Africans and African Americans and other Africans living in diaspora, especially those taken by slavery who've lost their roots. Now that video got a lot of um, traffic, um, which surprised me a bit. And today I'm here talking about another African topic again, as you can, as you've probably seen from the title of this video. I wish, I really wish I could come here and talk about something happier, something more positive, but in the world we live in today, these are the issues that we are facing. Um, basically, as you probably would know, in recent times there have been reported xenophobic attacks in South Africa against other African nationals because there are a lot of South African people who are upset that these African immigrants are taking their jobs. Now these people are not only Nigerian as most people think, they are Nigerian, Zimbabwean, um, Zambia and there's a lot of Africans who are facing these um, issues and in fact there have been refugee camps which have been built in I think Durban and other parts of South Africa for African nationals who have been chased away from their homes and from their shops. Now there has been further backlash because of this in countries like Nigeria where we're seeing people burning down MTN, um, I don't know what those things are called, MTN property anyways because it's a South African owned um, company burning down shop rights because they are South African owned, destroying um, completely like, demo not demolishing, like destroying and um, emptying people's shops because they have, um, they work in shop rights or they have their shops in shop rights. I don't really want to go into how senseless all these activities are because they are reality in the world that we live in today, but I want to go into what our response should be. To start off, as South Africans who feel that other African nationals are taking away their jobs, what should our response be? Because I'm saying our uh, because I truly believe that, you know, we are one Africa and we should not be fighting against ourselves, we should be fighting for each other. So that is the first thing. It all boils down actually to our broken governmental systems. If we had governments that work, we would not have these issues. Anyways, our governments are broken. So what can we as individuals do in response to this? If you're a South African who feels that other Africans are stealing your jobs, are taking away what is meant for you, the response is not death and destruction. The response is not a hunger for blood. The response is to work and to strive to ensure that your country makes it conducive for you to work also. You might think that other Africans are coming and taking what is meant for you, but those Africans are simply working the same way that you work. It's not even a matter of being African, it's just a matter of being human. They came from where they from where they wherever they were because of opportunity and they worked hard to get to where they are today they did not just get it by the snapping of fingers you also can work together with them what is wrong with in your own country working with other african nationals what is wrong with working for them what is wrong with partnering with them that's just a question that i have then so other african nationals um especially those living in their own countries who are completely upset and appalled by what is happening we should be appalled, we should be upset, but the destruction of lives and property is not the way to go. It's not going to solve anything. Can we just be honest to say that destroying shop rights, destroying MTN is only going to hurt Nigerians? It's you who's going to have even worse network, it's you who's going to have less places to go to to um, shop, essentially. We know that our government is unresponsive and we have to do drastic things to make them respond, but we don't have to hurt ourselves in the process. We do not have to hurt ourselves in the process. Why don't you do things that would actually get attention and at the same time better the lives of Nigerians living in Nigeria? Nigerians living in Nigeria have died because of these protests that have taken place. 
They've lost their means of livelihood. They've lost their shops. They've lost their inventory because of what is going on. How does that make sense? As Nigerians, Zimbabweans, Zambians, and other Africans who want to help the plight of our citizens, of our nationals who are suffering in South Africa, the best thing for you to do is to lend your voice. The best thing for you to do is to send help to these refugee camps. The best thing for you to do is actually to protest, but protest peacefully. In Ikeja City Mall, as all these other attacks were happening in Circle Mall and Jakonde, in Ikeja City Mall there were also riots, there were also protesters, but their protest was peaceful. Their protest was peaceful and they still got the notable um, recognition. So why can't we learn from those who've gone before us? Why can't we learn that violent protests, bloodshed, only hurt the people who are actually doing it themselves? The fact that our government is irresponsible and unresponsive does not mean that we should take matters into our own hands to the extent that we're killing others who are just like us. Let's understand the human condition and the human problem. And the last thing I would like to say is that we shouldn't blame South Africa for what is going on. South Africa is an entity and blaming her will be a generalization. There are South Africans in South Africa who are saying that they do not support or condone this and who are actually protesting, who are providing for the refugees who are now displaced. So where do we place those people when we're shouting on South Africa? We need to stop generalizing and saying, oh, South Africa did, did this, oh, Nigeria did this. Yes, we have to hold the country or the government responsible for what goes on, but we cannot hold the entire people or entity responsible. We have to look at it from the point of the human condition. The best thing that we can do as other Afri African nationals is work with South Africa. Work with the South Africans who are also trying to stop this, to actually combat these issues and these problems. The main issue that is causing all these things in South Africa is unemployment. And it's also an apartheid mentality. It's also an entitlement mentality because they feel that they've been owed so much from a country that didn't give them what they deserve as with a lot of the rest of Africa. So when are we going to come together, Africa, and work together for what we've always wanted? When are we going to stop blaming what has gone before us and focus on where we are right now so we can build what we want for tomorrow? That's just what I think. You don't have to agree with me. But if you have more um, ideas and stuff, please share them in the comment section below. Um, to be honest, I just really hope that our government can step up in this instance because xenophobia is something that has been coming up for too many years now and we actually need to get to the root cause to solve this problem as with a lot of our issues. Um, I just hope and pray for the families that have been hurt by directly or indirectly, which is basically all of us, by these attacks and I just pray that they can find solace. I pray that for the people whose shops and um, property has been destroyed and that they can find somewhere to start up, start up again because our countries are not easy. They're not easy to survive in. So if you see someone who has been able to build something up for themselves, don't be so quick to just go and destroy it. The South Africans who are living in Nigeria who have also struggled to get what they have, they didn't participate in xenophobic attacks. So why are we attacking them? That's just food for thought anyways. And I just feel that we need to be able to channel our anger and our frustration in more productive ways. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share with others who you think would enjoy it also. Lastly, I would just like to say, Africa, where do we stand? Africa, who are we for? Ourselves? Because sometimes it doesn't seem so. Thank you for watching.